Okay, hello. Let, let me s slowly start the uh, stream. Hello, uh, Jinder Marak or Jinder Marak. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, okay, I just need to. Yeah, of course, I need to share it in Discord. Keep forgetting. Uh, Switch to TV. North gate. Okay. Okay, so um Okay, let's let's begin. Um, a, oh yes, I forgot to start Visual Studio Code because there I have my to-do list. Um, so yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, today I'm going to mostly try to do a uh, kind of add light mapping into the engine. And, but not like, not baking into the engine. I'm going to bake maps in Blender. I already tried, uh, so I'm gonna show you that. And then I'm gonna import that into the engine. I don't, I don't yet know, I haven't seen it in the engine yet. So I don't know if it's going to work or not. Uh, this could be a feature that I'm gonna cut completely out. One of the problems with baking is that, um, is that you know it takes a lot of time, and Blender is also very annoying uh, with uh, how baking works. Uh, I think that before like two point eight Blender, uh, it was actually easier to bake than it is today. <laughs> now you need to have a lot, a lot more setup with nodes and stuff, and and every time you want to, you need to rebake. You need to repeat the whole the whole process. So yeah, I'm because of that. It takes it kind of takes a long time. It's a, it's a it's a long cycle to to get things uh, baked and and of course you have to wait for the baking to to complete. So I'm not exactly sure if I want to have that in the engine, but I just want to to try it at least. Anyway, uh, but yeah, I I was. I was never really a, a huge fan of baking uh, ever. So, um, but this time, I think because I'm trying to like achieve this kind of like a, a late '90s, early 2000s look of the game, which did use bake b baked maps, then I want to try it. So uh, I did. Okay, well, first the question, is Podvarak made in a custom engine? No, I'm actually uh, making Podvarak in Unity. Uh, this is just like a side thing. <laughs> and I am I want to use, well, I, the engine is pretty basic right now. There's, there's very little features. There's no editor. I just code everything. I spawn everything through code. You know, I just need to make every game object and place it and... So yeah, uh, so yeah, working with the engine is very is very annoying because there's no editor, there's no like. But I I like I enjoy making the the tech the the stuff work and and go through like the low level part of the engine which I never did before. So uh, it's interesting and also like I want to use the engine to make 
smaller games, maybe like this rally game, like uh, early 2000s inspired rally game, and not like big games like Podrak. Podrak is a really big game, actually. And the Unity's complexity and component system, it really helps making that game. But this one is like, you have one car, you... <laughs> Everything is kind of, uh, how do you say? Like, it, yeah, it's 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 a much simpler. There's no like weird cross references and huge component trees and stuff like that. It's very simple. Anyway, uh, so my last stream was on Tuesday, and what did I do in between? What was it Tuesday? Yeah, it was Tuesday. So I I did a lot of uh, fixes. In the meantime, uh, so for example, I finally found out how to make a borderless full screen. Uh, but the problem is that it doesn't work as sort of expected. Wait, let me let me get into my project folder, which I could, forgot that I should open this up. Okay, so an engine, no, not there. It's in drive, drive, and I have this config file. So this config will be read on the beginning when you start. Oh yeah, I can actually edit it from uh, from VS Code as well. Uh, yeah, the voice is fine. I was just thinking. Anyway, um, yes, drive. Uh, config file and I have a lot of stuff in the config file and every, even even stuff relating to car behavior so torque maps and tire slip maps uh, but I also have the screen data I'm, I'm probably going to for the final game I might uh, I might split it uh, into like you know car data and uh, game uh, kind of screen graphics related data so if I make it one and I start the game, it will go into this like full screen mode. Yeah, and now the, the game starts. But uh, it's supposed, to, oh, and the, and the mouse is not there. So yeah, this is definitely not in. I think that it's actually behaving like exclusive full screen, which is exactly what I was trying not to. And so if you try to alt tab, this is the problem because suddenly the window uh, minimizes into a change resolution to zero zero, which is really strange. Uh, so frame buffer couldn't be compiled because of that. And now it says that there's problems with the uh, OpenGL buffers. So yeah, definitely not the way how to do a full screen. But this is what this is what the OpenGL manual said. <laughs> that this is how you do. Uh, but I'm not exactly sure. So what is it? Uh, where is that? Uh, I need to go to application. Come on, Visual Studio. Application. So. So yes, if the window mode is borderless full screen. So this is what the OpenGL tutorial says. It says that if you have borderless full screen, you need to do this, which is setting these red, green, blue, and bits, which I don't understand why exactly. Like, whoops. OpenGL borderless full screen, like because borderless full screen just means make it's it's a window that is full screen that covers the whole screen is above everything in Windows, and it doesn't have a title bar, so it's not decorated as you would say. But yeah, where is uh, wait? Uh, oh yeah, no, GLFW. This is what I wanted. So if you go into the window guide, it will say that if you want to make the windowed full screen windows, which is also called borderless full screen, 
this is how you do it and then it says you need to set these bits but and then you pass a monitor to the create window function and I don't think that's uh, the best thing to do because if you pass a monitor then it will be exclusive full screen. Yeah, this is what I this is what I don't understand because Yeah, I will I will fix that some other time. But anyway, it will be for now I'm just going to use a windowed mode which works great with alt tabbing. So yeah, the problem is that if you if I try to use a full screen alt tabbing crashes the game which is not great, you know, I can I can alt tab, I can do whatever I want else. And it still works. Okay. So that's one thing. That I tried to fix this. Oh I can I can leave alt tab four. That's one of the things that I tried to fix. Um uh, but still to do. Anyway. So another thing is that uh, the car no longer st yeah so there are some physics things that I uh, that I fixed um, physics fixes anyway car no longer steers in air yes so before when you would go off a cliff you would actually be able to steer in air <laughs> which like okay well now I just check okay if if no wheels are grounded you shouldn't steer so that's that makes sense but also you shouldn't steer if uh, not all, not any uh, wheel is on the ground, but only the front wheels. So only the steering wheels, the the wheels that steer. I don't mean the steering wheel, the 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 you know the helm. Anyway, so and rotation drag is only added to yaw. Yeah. So one of the things that is a diff uh, that. The way I prevented uh, over rotating the car because there needs to be some kind of drag to the rotation, right? Anyway, yes. So uh, if you haven't been here on the last stream, you should know that in uh, in this game there is no um, the uh, the physics doesn't work on all four wheels. There is no I don't simulate the wheels. I only simulate wheels for the suspension, but not. For, so so yeah, as you can see, I can just I can spin around in in place. Well, because I still haven't implemented the uh, you know don't steer when you are going slowly. But yeah, basically what I'm doing is that I directly uh, I directly influence the the steering. Uh, sorry, not the steering, but the uh, r rotation rate or your rate or angular velocity, however you want to call it, instead of uh, instead of actually simulating the wheels. And the reason why I do it is because it's much easier to tweak. So later, if I want to, you know, increase the speed of rotation, or I say, okay, at this speed, go at this rotation, it's much easier than dealing with um, stuff like uh, understeer and oversteer. So, yeah. That's why I picked it, and because you know this this little game is not supposed to be like a simulator, but an arcade. And I really like that. I really want to like focus on the feel, and not on the physics, which is what I did. And it was a nice spin, <laughs> which is what I what which is what I did with Infinland, and then I never finished it because I was down in the uh, in the bottomless pit of physics. Anyway, so. Uh, so yeah, the thing is that what 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 did I write? Rotation drag is only added to your yeah yeah. So before on the on the previous stream, how the uh, this rotation drag. So yeah, when you turn left and you release your your key, the um, the car will like attempt to stop right rotating. So that that's the drag that I'm talking about. This is rotation drag. And the way that it worked before is that it would all, it would work in all axes. So even if you're going up and down on the bumps, you know you're, you're like you're not you're not just yawing, but you're also pitching and or rolling. Th there would be this uh, drag, which is not 
which, which was very incorrect. So, so the way I do it now is I only apply it to yo and only when at least one wheel is on the ground. So, you know, if you're in the air flying away, you won't have that, you won't have drag uh, to the, to the, to any of the wheels. So yeah, if you, if you just fall off, uh, well, now I, yeah, I need to, I need to fall off nicely. There you go, a little spin. Anyway, um, hello everyone. Hello. <laughs> so yes, that is what I added, but yes, it definitely needs a lot more work because you can see here uh, when you're at zero velocity or, oh no, I'm actually going in the ba backwards. There is this thing where, you know, uh, because I'm simulating sort of a slip, tire slip, but only one, uh, only, like, I'm basically treating the whole car as one wheel, right? Imagine that there's one wheel under under the middle of the car. Uh, except for the suspension. The suspension is actually working on each wheel. But the thing is that when you do a classic uh, slip ratio calculation, at zero velocity, the... Uh, the values go into infinity. Because you divide by... Yeah, because it's a ratio, and then you have a zero. So when you're when you're moving very close to zero speed, um, you actually have instability, which is why this happens. This. So yeah, I I need to basically add like a special case if you're going slowly, but when you're going fast, it's actually really fun and nice. I just need to fix the start. And, yeah. And some simulators, for example, Assetto Corsa, they don't even care about going slowly. Because, in Assetto Corsa, if you try to go very slowly, uh, it will actually, the, like, the, the, the rigid body of the car will just stop at one moment. Like, it will just sleep, like, like this. It will just become velocity zero very abruptly because uh, because of this issue of uh, you know instability at very small velocities and while other simulators would try to treat this in a in a special way or something they just don't they're like yeah if you're going less than zero you're stopped so that's it anyway yeah that's a nice uh, side story Let's see, what do we have more? Uh, oh yeah, and the car collider is now a convex hull, so the whole car actually collides. You have seen that when I was rolling the car. Um, and not a box, and before it used to be a very thin box. And by the way, I can actually, uh, I can actually show you that, um, that if, I in, uh, if I turn on the uh, physics debugger, you can see that, yeah, so everything that is green is a static mesh collider and everything that is white is a dynamic mesh collider. And you can actually even see the ray casts. So you can see that the four wheels are ray casting into the ground and that uh, like the, the red ball, the red sphere over there is where the ray casts are hitting, uh, hitting the ground. And, uh, and the white here, which is kind of hard to see, is the convex hull of my car. So that is what is actually colliding with the ground and not, uh, not the box anymore. I might actually still have the box somewhere. No, no not here. Max, whoops, wait. Let me search for a oops. Let me search for a collider. There we go. Add colliders, yes. But where is the uh, oh, car collider? Yes. Here is the box. So uh, 
if I replace this, the convex hull, with... And I actually made a special uh, mesh for that. For the convex hull, so that a uh, bullet doesn't need to bake a special hull. It's much easier to just provide it with a, with a, with a custom one, which I created in Blender. Uh, yeah, so, so let's try this, and then it's probably going to be... Uh... Oh, no! Uh... Did I just, uh, I accidentally shut down the chat, and now I don't see anything anymore. So if you have written anything in the past, this is weird. Why doesn't, why doesn't chat, like, showed everything from the start? Uh, so if you have written anything, you should, you, you need to rewrite. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So yeah, if if I so this is the old way. If I if I just debug physics, you can see that it's like a th very thin box. So the the top of the uh, of the car was not even colliding. It's very hard to see, but I, I hope you can. Like there is like a white box inside the car. So if you would flip on the on the roof, it would just be like a thin. Uh, you know, it would just collapse completely. Let's try to flip it over. And now, of course, when I try to flip, it's hard. <laughs> oh, there. Yeah, as you can see. <laughs> oh, it even fell through. Wow, that's weird. Ah, strange. Okay. Hmm, that was another very good, uh, the, I don't know, it's like, I, it was weird that the box collider would fall through the mesh like that, easily like that. Hmm, I wonder if that's a bullet problem. I said custom engine is fun, what's it like? Um, I mean, what's it like? It's very basic. Uh, but it does have, it's like an OpenGL, it's very, you know, it, everything is very direct. And I actually have an example here to, so yeah, I'm going to open source the engine at some point, but it's just, you know, there's, uh, there's a few not very nice things that I want to uh, fix and make it easier to use. But I have a little like template that I use. This is the minimal template as they call it. So only this is how you start the whole engine. That's it. That's that's the whole thing. So you basically just have like a, an engine struct a class. Uh, and then you say start the window, initialize everything, which initializes the physics, the the audio, the, you know, the, the rendering, everything GUI. And then you just have this loop, which says, okay, the, if the engine is running, then render or do nothing or, or also draw the scene. So that's a super uh, quick way to start. And I have some, uh, for example, this is a uh, concurrent load. Uh, yeah, this is where I was testing concurrent loading. But anyway, yeah, this is like a more complicated one, but you can basically see what the process is. At the first, you kind of load things into memory from disk. You can say, and you can actually do that with just load everything. So you say, okay, in the res folder, resources folder, load everything. And then you can uh, get every object as a, either as a mesh or a texture or a shader, assemble them, create materials. But this can also happen uh, automatically if you use GLTF, so you can even skip this phase. And then you create game objects, which are basically binding the meshes and the materials. Uh, and then, or as you can see here, GLTF can load directly everything into scene. So you just load, load the GLTF and it will create all the objects for you. You can play audio sources. Uh, this is a no clip controller just so you can fly around and then yeah and then as you're running the only thing that you need to do is draw render a GUI or render a uh, 
and then just call the renders for for the frame to get rendered uh, and uh, yeah these profile scopes are just for uh, for like uh, this test which I was analyzing in a, in a timeline so let's go back to this uh, is it optic you mean like uh, you mean like the analyzer I did use uh, well the thing that I used was basically uh, this thing called instrumenter which is so when I was when I was making the first version I was watching this uh, uh, this videos by this guy called Cherno I don't know if you know so he made this thing called instrumenter which you can easily like log things you can save things uh, save timings into a json where is it oh there it is instrumenter so it's super simple it's like it has these macros for profiling and then and even i added some so you have like uh, timers and yeah for for easier timing and then it creates basically it builds up a json and what you can do is uh, when it saves this, uh, wait, let me see, uh, where is it? Uh, so concurrent loads and it will create this resu results JSON. So now when you open Chrome, hmm, wait, just a moment. I don't know what it was I was doing in Chrome the last time. So let me just open a new tab. Oh, yeah, well, I was in Facebook. Uh, tracing okay so when you open uh, Chrome there is this special page Chrome tracing I don't know if you know it and what it does is that it gives you a little uh, GUI for dropping results.json into it so you basically just drop it inside Chrome and you get this so everything you've timed, if you hold Alt and scroll, then you can scroll into it. So so it's like you get this timeline. It's basically like a, a Unity uh, profiler. Anyway, uh, so yeah, this is for this is I was testing here concurrent loading, so that when uh, I basically when I'm loading stuff from the disk, I I start a new thread for each thing and then it loads much faster than just loading everything at the same time except shaders because I need to compile shaders um, on the main thread or the graphics thread <laughs> and and actually they take the most time so compiling shaders actually takes the most time but yeah also these meshes these test meshes are super small so for anything that's bigger you're gonna have more time and then this is the this is the rendering loop. What is this? Oh, there's another texture all, all, all over here. Oh, that's oh that's probably the GLTF loader because that one is not parallelized yet. And then this is the rendering loop. Game loop render swap buffers. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've used it. Uh, I like real time analysis. So I've heard about tracing. But the problem is that I didn't understand how to actually install it into my my engine. So I felt like it was too. Oh, hello, Tracy Chapman, whoever that is. Uh, so, yeah, I, I didn't know exactly how to make it hook into the stuff. But yeah, it looks very nice. I like it. I mean, it's it's so and I know that a lot of people use it. So maybe one day. Uh, anyway, it's really nice to just like create the uh, this results thing and then be able to analyze a bit what the frame times are. Let me continue. I didn't even I'm not even going on to the, the stuff that <laughs> I'm supposed to do today. OK, and add stone walls. Yes, I've added some stone walls at some places like here and 
so yeah, when you're going up the hill, you're not falling off the cliff all the time now, which is great. But I've only placed them like uh, very quickly and yeah, so what I was doing is like I just swept walls everywhere and then I just deleted the parts where there were no walls. But now there is some holes like this, so I will, I'm going to fix those holes some other time. And then not on the stream because it's kind of a tedious job, not, not very streamy. Uh, oh yeah, I also tried adding some tunnels, which are procedural, kind of. They have some procedural noise, as you can see, well, if I try to scale them. And then I discovered that in uh, in my engine, uh, Bullet doesn't really like when you scale mesh colliders. So these tunnels are not actually colliding at all for some reason, and I have to find out why. Uh, Definitely worth it. We use it even during development of bigger scale engine. Nice. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just need to find a way how, how you hook it into an engine. If you have any tips, I don't know. Do I have to like wrap every function into uh, into the Tracy thing or something? I don't know. So, yeah. How, how difficult is it to get it running? Do I, am I going to need to spend like a month? That's, that's the main, that's the main thing. Oh, I, I actually added some trees as well, which I completely forgot about. I forgot to write it down or say to anyone, but yeah, these are trees from Podvarak actually. So, and, and then I have some more winter trees here, which you can see in the little video I posted on Twitter, but the video is so, the Twitter compression is so bad <laughs> that you can barely see it. Uh, and I think that's just because of the, uh, like a pixelated look of the game. So uh, the compression is just terrible. And, uh, but yeah, so this part is going to be sort of snowy in the end. I just need to make it at one point. Yeah, so there's going to be some snow here and some snow over here. And then the other side is going to be pretty dry. That's what I decided to do. And maybe I'm going to add some snow on the side, on the banks here on the top. But yeah, this this should be the the main snowy part, I think. Uh, okay. And yes, these trees don't fit here at all because these are like deciduous, if that's the way you pronounce it. And it's supposed to be winter time. So actually, I should probably delete them. I don't actually need them. I was just kind of testing. Anyway, yeah, let's let's keep this one for uh, posterity. Let's see. Uh, and I fixed a GPU bug. What what is the GPU? Oh yeah, right. I was I posted this tweet yesterday, where. Um, where I had, uh, when I was running on the de dedicated GPU, because when I'm building this, when I'm, when I'm testing, I'm actually running on the integrated GPU. But when I tried running on the dedicated GPU, what happened was that everything turned out, all shaders failed for some reason. And I made this nice, uh, I made this nice, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Wow, I posted a lot of things in the meantime wasn't even aware of that. So yeah, I, I made this nice magenta fail shader just like in Unity, you know, because I just love it so much. Uh, it's very dear to me, very close to heart. So uh, yeah, if a shader fails compiling, I just put the magenta material on it. And the thing is that, so this, when you run the same thing on the dedicated GPU, it runs fine, looks nice. Running on the, uh, on the, on the dedicated GPU, uh, this is Intel CPU, GPU, and this is a uh, NVIDIA GeForce. So I'm like, what the hell is going on? And it turns out that there was a, I made a mistake in shader, which I, I, which I put here, like I have this function that I'm not actually using it anywhere, but I just wrote this stupidity. Like you, I'm returning a, a thing that equals a thing. And the problem, I think that the main problem was 
that, that it returns a vec4 and and I'm trying to return a, uh, a vec3 right because this is a 3 and this is a 3 here so the f the the most the craziest thing about it is that it totally ran fine with this stupidity uh, on the on the integrated GPU and it only failed with the dedicated GPU so that's such an amazing thing about GPUs that you can just have random problems on on different GPUs so uh, yeah amazing and um, I'm so looking forward to all the bugs that people report but hey at least I'm gonna learn something new uh, okay so uh, next thing okay so that's what I did in the past week finally I'm over it but on this stream I want to do some light baking which I actually already did and I'm going to sh you know show it soon uh, but for that I have a separate UV layer and I don't have additional UVs in my vertex so my vertex is kind of baked uh, and you can see baked I mean it's you know hard coded I don't have any sort of magic magic you know vertex construction or templates maybe I should have uh, this is an old uh, an old thing when I didn't know how to calculate these things automatically um, but yeah as you can see there's three position coordinates two UV coordinates and three color coordinates hmm I just realized there's no alpha okay so basically uh yeah i'm using this vertex struct for everything so the mesh uses a, uh, a vector of vertices and yeah everything depends on this so if i need to add uh, more uv stuff i'm going to just have to change everything so i'm gonna add uv2 to all the meshes even though they're not gonna even have that because i mean if the shader doesn't use uv2 it doesn't matter so I'm going to have to change the vertex I'm gonna change the shader and I guess that's it I don't know I'll, we'll see if it works or not um, okay so import light bake texture into game okay and then if there is time because I don't know how long this is gonna take it might take too long I'm going to work on the UI and I want to add just add some quads into the space into like screen space but they should be ratio independent so no matter how stretched or what ratio of the game you have it should always be uh, yeah well this is the problem with uh, you know in unity you have this system of like anchoring and stuff because like if you change a re oh oh no Oh, I totally didn't know that this is actually broken. So the frame buffer doesn't... Okay, so I guess I'm just calculating the ratio incorrectly. Oh, but the, the extents also sucks. But I think if I turn off the frame buffer... So yeah, the frame buffer is used for the post-processing effects, in case you don't know. Um, so yeah, if you if I stretch now, yeah, it's it works fine. Okay, so yeah, you can you can change your size of the game whenever you want, or you can maximize it as well without the frame buffer. <laughs> With the frame buffer, there is this bug. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah. So when you change the ratio of the screen, the UI should stay, you know, the same ratio, the correct ratio. You know, if it's square, it should be square. Because if you just draw a quad uh, in the shader without matrices, then it will just project it, it will stretch it always. So, yes, I, that's what I want to do. And I think that that's where I'm going to end, if there's time. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, some questions. Um, even using developments, yes. 
uh, I use it with crate with look see. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna see later what that is. There's macros like before. No, it should be rather simple. It's not difficult. I can write a blog post on integrating it. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That would be very nice, very useful. Uh, with Tracy, you end up using few macros only at places where you need to measure. Okay, unless you have high poly count, it's fine. I don't know what, uh, what that was about. Anyway, oh yeah, you, me you mean if I have a poly count with u adding UV2, I guess. Because then you, I need to have different types of vertices for uh, for different. Uh, yeah, I mean this is so this is so small. Uh, anyway, uh, the, this the the game. I mean everything is so low poly and. Uh, yeah, and the, and the thing is that the funny thing is that I yes I thought that all this time I was running on the d dedicated GPU and then yesterday when I found this bug I discovered that I was actually running on the integrated GPU. And I mean, if this game can run on the integrated GPU so well, eh, it's fine, you know? So, uh, I'm glad that it does work so well because I mean, the integrated GPU is really bad. So I guess, and, and of course, I'm using 32-bit for this game. So you can pretty much run on any garbage from maybe even 15 years ago. Um, anyway, yes, so let's start with this. Uh, let me just check where my git is. If I need to push something or commit something before I go into this adventure with adding UV. Oh, what is this? Oh, yeah, I changed the Vox J shape. I totally, I totally forgot. I should not use the, uh, box collider let's make this a kind of land. yeah let's actually just remove this because i'm not going to use the box anymore you've seen it on stream so no need to have that line there uh yeah oh yes and of course the to do yeah let's just yeah i'm gonna save it um cleanup and to do Okay, so now we can go into the UV adventure. Let's try this. So I'm basically going to whoops, Kate float. Yeah, it is a bit uh, hard to type because I have this cable from the microphone. Right. If I put it under the keyboard, no, that's not good. Uh, okay, let's let's try it like this first. Yes, shared vertex formats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I I don't know if the way I should if I I've, if I want to split vertex, then I need to make some sort of um, uh, yeah, then I need to have different vert vertices for every, so so like mesh would be a template that would take any size vertex or something but then the mesh needs to also know what's a position what's a uv yeah there's so much more work then because then it just needs to propagate into everything and then maybe you're going to have some kind of a vertex builder vertex factory where you create the attributes for everything and stuff i don't know i think it's just going to overcomplicate everything and probably going to spend one more week just doing that <laughs> okay so well let's just add a uh, another one yeah let's let's call it uh, ue one I guess you know what I think I'm actually because this is in this is an H this is a header file this cable not very good Okay, some cable management, unplanned cable management. I'm actually going to add a define because this is going to be included into everything anyway. So let's say define, I think I was writing like this, 
or use should I use a use maybe yeah okay so I'm going to add I'm gonna if if def this and because this is included into everything it should uh, it should work so for now I'm just gonna use this at the top and then uh, yeah let's see I think that's a good idea <laughs> okay so let's uh, let's see the mesh because that's the next thing that's going to include it probably uh, so mesh uses a vector of vertices and I need to find where am I actually oh create attributes okay so create attributes oh there it is so I yeah I have I made these like simplified GL functions that I wrap some of the basic GL functions and I have actually have this vertex attribute helper uh, oh yeah I totally forgot about this that I actually have something like this with which I can add elements in a nicer way that that uh, wraps all the GL um, GL calls. So what I think I just need to do is uh, where is attributes? Uh, no 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 no. Mm, what the hell? Where where is? All oh, right, I didn't promote it. So when I create attributes, I'm going to add another UV. Add elements GLM vec vec two of two elements, I guess. What is this? Number of elements. Elements for attribute. And there's more things. Type and normalized. But it's optional, I guess. I don't remember. Let's call it UV uh, UV zero and UV one, right? Oh yeah, it is actually a default. There are defaults for that. Right, the type. I forgot about that. Okay, yes, by default it's always floats and then it, it will create all the attributes for me, hopefully. Uh, so let's see if I if this actually compiles. By the way, Tracy has Chrome import binary for convenience. Um, yeah, it's going to take some time to rebuild the whole engine. Now. By the way, Tracy has Chrome support binary for convenience, busy looking at the simplest integration. Oh, okay. Nice. So yeah, you can actually, you mean uh, you can load the Tracy files into uh, into Chrome tracing. You can take Chrome tracing results into Tracy. Oh, I see. Nice. Oh yeah, by the way, this is taking a long time because of I'm streaming, of course, as well. Mm, what is this? Sign unsigned match. All oh, right. This is comparing a signed with an unsigned oh fuck, i hate this i don't really need to fix this i mean unless it goes below zero and then i have a problem shader index why is shader index all right Shader index should never be below zero, so I can actually make this unsigned end. Right?
so many warnings. Oh yeah, by the way, this... Oh, there it is. Let's see. Is it going to break? And... It works! Okay, so we've added more UVs. But it still works, and the... Uh, well, actually, I have no idea if uh, colors are working, but I think they should, because... I didn't really do anything. Um, so yeah, now we have more, much more data, much more memory used because we added UV, but there's no change. So that's that's a great sign. Okay, that's a great sign. That's a great sign. And now let's try to add it. A, let's try to add a shader that's going to use that. Hmm. What is, what's my shader, shader? Res, uh, standard shader. That's how I call it. This is like the shader that's applied to everything. Okay, so, uh, let's add a thing. Let's add a new texture that I'm gonna call a light map. Uh, or should I add it below? Fragment uniforms. Let's add this. Uniform sampler 2D light map. And, uh, well, yes, we're going to need to have to add UV, right? So basically, copy this. Let's call this UV1. Uh, location 2, location 3. Mm. I'm not exactly sure if we need this location stuff. I never really understood it, but yeah, anyway. And then we're going to need to have an... Why am I VEC3? 3 is affine reversal for... P oh, right, yes, which I'm not even using. UV1, and then I have to add here... Uh, VUV1, and that's going to be a VEC2, which I don't need to really do anything with it. I'm just going to transfer it and, of course, interpolate it. It's going to be interpolated. Uh, and then I'm going to read a new texture as Maybe I should have made a new shader for that because that's only going to be applied. Ah, who cares? Other way around. I don't know what that was referred to. I'm sorry, I didn't see it in time. Um, let's see. Hmm. So yeah, this is the this is the code for the blob for the shadow blob for from the car, that is below like this shadow. So yeah, I'm actually I'm actually applying this to all the shaders per pixel. <laughs> so it's actually it's kind of like working like a like a deferred light or something, except I'm not even, you know, I'm not limiting it to the under the car space. I'm just applying it to every vertex that you can see, which is not the most efficient thing, but there's only one of them, so who cares. Uh so yeah, let's read this texture. I'm gonna add this here. Uh, light map texture, light map and v u v one. I don't need an x y because that it's already there. It's all of them is there. Um, let's see. Uh, light map. And let's try to... Oh, wow, I have so many multipliers here. Let's multiply this with light map. And let's see if this even bakes. So, yes, the problem is that if I don't assign a light map, this is going to be black completely. Everything is going to be black. So, let's see. Let's see how this goes. Uh, 
So we ex expect to see everything black. That's what I'm saying. Oh, actually, I have a shader bug. And what is it? Error. Failed to compile a shader. Fragment shader standard. VUV1 not declared. Did I forget to declare it in the... Yeah, of course, I forgot to declare it in the fragment shader. By the way, I, I have fragment and vertex in the same file because I just thought, I don't know, it's kind of easier to not have to go from one file to the other. So I just use this like tag, shader fragment and shader vertex. And that's only the two shader types I have for now. Anyway, let's try to re rebuild now where I have the UV one. Oh, still a problem. What does it say? Texture, no matching overloaded function. What? What? That's the function. Using implicit conversion. Cannot convert from high p floats to four component vector of high what uh thirty four thirty oh yeah i'm not gonna count but i think what am i doing here light map V U ah oh, I made it vec two vec three sorry my mistake probably that probably that what does it say compiling yes everything compiled correctly and everything is black but not completely black which is weird wait am I actually I am lurping me with something right. Oh, right, I'm lurping it with the fog. I'm actually mixing it. Right, right, right. Because there's a fog on top. <laughs> well, that's nice, actually. Okay, but there, you can see that the light map is being applied somehow. Okay, so let's now load a uh, the light map map from blender oh yeah by the way i didn't even show you the the light map so before i was uh, before streaming today i tried to make a light map and the problem is that as i said the setup for the light mapping is super annoying because first when you're setting up uh, baking you need to make everything white uh, because if you don't do that it will consider uh, you know it will think your texture is the source for lighting so basically first you need to make everything white and then you need to make a, a light map but here it is so here is the light map and if I put it to base map uh, it uses UV2 and as you can see this is the the baked light map uh, which is also is there some shading yeah there is shade so this is without any shading so this is how it would appear in the game uh, without any shading at all and yeah you can see that you know the baking is not perfect because I'm not I'm not using a very high iterate uh, how do you say sample count but you can see that uh, i mean for testing you know later for for actual baking i'm going to use but you can see here uh, that this uh, the bridge is actually casting a shadow on the on the terrain 
which is nice. You know, when you're passing under the bridge, you're gonna you're gonna be affected by your shadow, hopefully. Oh, and there is this old trees that I actually removed. You can see their shadows here, which is funny. Uh, yeah, maybe I should have kept uh, the, the trees for, for testing. But these little trees, are they actually casting? Oh, they're actually casting some little shadows. So uh, even if they're completely, almost completely, uh, uh, you know, very thin and no, uh, no leaves on it. So they're not very, very occludy. And then you have these weird, funky uh, shades. So yeah, the thing is that for each material, you have to actually do this. This is not just for one material. And that's the annoying part. Uh, because this mountain thing has two materials. Well, this the water thing is not... I'm not using it for baking. But if you click on the... Uh, if we select the roads, now we have these three more uh, uh, materials that we all have to hook up into the same way so yeah this is the combined combined map like texture and map so you can see both uh which one is this tarmac so it should actually be this no which uv layer am i using oh okay yeah uv map one Oh yeah, because I'm in this preview mode, that's why. Okay, and not in the render view. Yeah, because if you're in the preview mode, you are actually seeing the UV map that is selected. So if this one is selected, it will uh, project the texture using that UV map. So yeah, this is the default one. But then on top, I want to layer this thing, which is the... Uh, the baked texture, and you, as you can see, it's completely fucked up. And I think that this is because there's actually an overlapping roads, or they used to be, which I removed in the meantime, but I did not rebake. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> that's totally fine. The, mo the important thing is that I have a map which I have baked into a light map dot light bake dot png and here it is so I want to load this into the game and apply it to the uv2 um, let's see so yeah let's uh, should I save this okay let's save this and let's actually open this um, where is my main CPP? So what I want to do is find this thing, which I can't remember where it is. Open. Okay, I think it is in Monty. Monty folder. Uh, Monty folder. Monty folder. So if you go to a Monty uh, light bake, is there a light bake? Oh, it's actually, oh no, wait, light bake. Light bake, okay, there it is. Okay, it's in the main folder. I should probably move it to Monty. Okay, so if I reload, it's gone. Oh, it also uses a magenta. Nice. So let's uh, like reopen it in. Hmm? Is it gonna is it gonna crash? What is going on? The asset browser failed somehow. It's not responding. Okay, it's responding now. Light bake. So there it is. But if it is it a different texture now, oh no. <laughs> I need to reassign this uh, in every material.
No, what? How did they make a copy with one? Okay, light big. There it is. Okay. No more magenta. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be the light bake. Oh wait, is it light bake already integrated into the GLTF? It probably is. So let's see. Uh, okay, let me first see what happens if I just if I just export this. Oh yeah, I have a little shortcut in there. Now, uh, if I go to models, Monty Road. Okay, let's see if it's gonna use the light bake uh, on t uh, as a UV zero. So the light bake should actually already be in the GLTF embedded. Okay. Yeah, I totally forgot that I actually have this. Oh yeah, right. Well, the problem is that it's using a wrong UV layer, right? So the light bake texture is there, but it's using a wrong UV layer. Uh, yeah, I have to now go back to all the materials. And yeah reassign this one because if it doesn't if it doesn't use that it's gonna not work so this one is using it and this one is using it and this one is using it okay okay so oh no blender Blender crashed. Wow, this is really rare, actually. I don't remember when was the last time Blender crashed. This is this is strange. Okay, the good thing is that I I like I saved right before exporting, so. Uh, models, Monty Roads, and now it should be back. Whoa, what is what is going on here? I know nothing. Okay, so the textures are back, but the UV is still black. So what I'm actually going to do now is, well, first let's find the texture. Uh, let's load the texture here, auto, light map texture, engine assets, get texture, um, light bake, I think that was the name of the texture. Light map, okay, and then we're gonna see if it's valid or not. And I'm going to simply add to all the, all the materials. <clears throat> so let's see if this is gonna work. Uh, if I s okay mountain ground collider okay so let's go to e r4 which is the range for material material and uh, why is it capital material in engine assets materials Okay, so materials, for each material I want to set a texture, texture, add texture, 
by the name of oh maybe I should check the shader if material shader oh but I don't know what uh, is standard so I can maybe compare the <laughs> this is this is amazing now I'm gonna compare pointers which is what you should always do no I'm joking okay shader so if it is the standard shader uh, no this is the pointer right not this this is the reference so um, adding a texture by name of light map and it's gonna be the light map texture okay so basically we're adding the light map to everything let's see if this works if this works this is gonna be a miracle because I thought the whole process is gonna be far more complicated I should not be celebrating early yeah of course I should not be celebrating early um, because Oh yeah, I didn't check the, the messages. Maybe it doesn't exist. What does it say? Any errors? Any errors? Okay. There are no errors. So the, the texture does exist. Let's try to move it to the end. Are there any materials being mentioned later? Not really. Okay, so... Okay, let's move this to the ends, but I don't think this is... Maybe my comparison to the pointer is not amazing. Let's see what happens here. Is my name light map? It is. Okay. No errors. So let's try to not compare just blindly put the material to everything doesn't work okay let's let me check by light map okay hmm let's just do light map dot r because it's black and white anyway oh yeah the light map is actually black and white I might save a few bytes in that Maybe the, the the name of the let's see uh, models not here in the drive folder resolution um, models Monte Road GLB why is there a GLB There should not be a GLB. 
did I accidentally ex oh you know the question is actually am I exporting the other UV map that's the that's a that's a good question and am I exporting to the right point yes I am uh, yeah let's actually look into our nice little uh, model because it's GLTF it's just a JSON string so we can open it up uh, let's see track no not track long but it's called Monty Road and so how how do I find UVs yeah there's some it's somewhere in the meshes uh, buffer view, buffer view, component type, vector, scalar, buffer views, vector 2, vector 3, okay, vector 2 is maybe it. Text. Is it UV or is it text? Oh, there it is. Okay, so primitives. Oh, yeah, mesh, meshes have primitives. I've completely forgotten about that. Uh, because in my engine, I don't actually have this distinction. Everything is a mesh, and mesh has a material. But uh, in GLTF, meshes have sub meshes, which is primitives. Uh, okay, so there is text chord text chord 0 let's look for text chord 1 there is so text chord 1 exists that's good it's uh, a buffer at number 95 which I'm not gonna look for but it does exist and this is the most important thing good to know good to know <sighs> Okay. Let me just try once more because maybe that GLTF was incorrect. Oh! Oh! This is different. Now everything is black. And there are errors. Added an invalid texture to light map property. Interesting. Invalid texture. Well, well, that means that it doesn't exist. So the image is not actually loaded. Mm, I should have uh, tested if it's valid. Okay, so the image. So this is the thing. The problem is that Blender exporter doesn't. Uh, yeah, well, it de this is depends on the Blender's GLTF exporter. Because if you have a texture connected to base color it will automatically export it as uh, as the first texture right but if you have additional textures it won't uh, export them it won't Im embed them into GLTF automatically so this is a problem so our solution is either to put something else that has this baked texture on or we can just copy and manually load uh, the texture. L let's actually just manually load the texture. Uh, so I'm going to add the light bake and and I am going to now there should be a light map should exist, right? I think so. I didn't even need to recompile, but there, let's see what. Uh, what it says. If there is any errors, why? Why is it recompiling? I didn't do anything. Any errors? OK, no errors. No errors, so. The texture is valid now, but it's still very dark. 
Is light map is light bake? That's the light bake, right? Okay, so we did load the light bake. Oh, look, I'm already. <laughs> I'm already assigning a material to everything. Oh yeah, that's the blob texture. <laughs> so I should probably add that. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where where is my... Uh, there it is. So since I'm already doing this here, I totally forgot that I have another for loop. And now I don't have a... Am I loading it before? Light map. Where is it? Light map. Oh, there it is. Um, wait a minute. No, not that. What am I doing? Oh, there it is. Is it after loading everything? Yes, it is. So the light map texture should exist. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really fix anything. I just rearranged things. Okay, it's still dark. But you know, the funny thing is that it's not black. Let's, uh, am I doing something wrong here? What if I just make a color, a light map? Hey. Okay, well, why is it gray? That's so strange. Does that mean that it loaded incorrectly? Is the am I not setting some UV thing? UV two is maybe completely incorrect. Let's uh, let's actually debug UV two. Um, UV one and uh, I guess zero zero or one one. Well, no, zero, zero, one. Okay, I guess like this. Okay, well, nice. Am I... Does it, does it work like that? Fail to compile shader. Constructor, not enough data. Okay, so I'm definitely not... I definitely have no idea how you initialize a vector for. Let's just do it like this. X, UE1, Y. Oh! It's not a correct subscript. Not uh, the parameter name. Oops! Wrong, wrong place to... to to say F5. Is everything okay now? Okay, so we can see that everything is black, which is 
which means that uv2 is completely wrong. So what am I doing wrong here? I am adding element here, creating an index buffer, indices. Oh, you know what? I just remembered. I'm not, when I'm reading GLTF, I'm not actually reading UV2 or UV1. Um, so what I actually need to do is I need to, where is my GLTF reader? There it is. I need to add a UV2 somewhere and I am using a function. Decode primitive and create mesh. Is that it? Probably. There it is. So I'm using a text chord zero. <laughs> yeah. Why did I even think that this should happen uh, automatically? So basically, let's copy this really quickly. Change this to one. Um, UVS. Okay. But then instead of setting a. Uh, oh, yeah. I should actually use a if def. Mm, what was the if def? something something and I completely forgot to add the if def in other places uh, so yeah if I'm using a uv1 so here here it is uvs1 uvt1 and yeah oh yeah I'm flipping the y right because of opengl byte offset uh, yeah okay 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 I think this is it. So let's see if it looks very nice and colorful. If it does, that means we got correct UV. We have finally got UV to a new layer of UV into the game. All right. Now we need to recompile the GLTF reader. And there it is. Oh, it's very funky. Nice. Okay, so we finally got UV2 into the game. Right, nice. It's actually playable. Wait, let me let me yeah, let me take a screenshot of that. Oh, well, now I'm in a tunnel. It's so dark. Nice. Beautiful. You can actually play like this. Might even be like uh, easier to play like this than uh, than with the annoying textures. Yeah, and of course all the walls are black and tunnels because there is no absolutely no um, UV two there, and the car of course itself is black. But I like that the. Uh, the particles are somehow red and I'm not exactly sure because they should also not have the UV2 but you know what I think the particles actually have more data on them so maybe some some other data is mixing with the UV with where UV should be this is so nice well, no, it's still it's still difficult to play, but it's nice. Really reminds me of some of the like old games. Oh damn! I should make one of those. You remember games like uh, what was what was that game? Never Winter or something, where it was very bro, very like broad strokes and very e simple polygons, and then dithering. That was fun. And then super complex RPG storyline. Which not even today's AAA games can do it 
can do. It's nice how that tunnel up there actually looks like a tunnel because it's black. <laughs> okay, enough. Looks nice. Uh, not another game. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not another game. Yeah, I won't. Uh, no, I'm just joking. Uh, but do you know what I mean? Uh, wait, well, let me see. Oh, wow, 16 notifications. Okay, Never Winter. Was it Never Winter the game? No, 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 not that one. Uh, what's the Overwinter game? Overwinter? Uh, something Winter. Winter, Winter game old uh, 80s. Uh, what is this? No, winter games. Looking through goggles. Pfft, no. Goggles. Ski game. It had like this UI, which was like goggles. Nobody knows that game. Okay. Winter. <laughs> I'll never find it. Never Winter. Yeah, that's what I thought, but Never Winter is some online game. It's not what I'm thinking about. It is game skiing. Ski or die. <laughs> it's definitely from the 80s. Because it's very, very simple. Dithering? I remember it as dithering. Uh, no. Oh my god, it was such an amazing game. Like, it was actually an FPS game. But it was so basic that you could... You could... You... It, it was so hard to... Man, I need to find it now. Um, RPG Winter. The search AI has failed you. Yeah, it ha it has. It really has. I should ask. Uh, should ask. Um, uh, Mid Journey. <laughs> uh, RPG Winter game old. I don't know what. Never Winter Nights. No, it's definitely not that. Uh, RP it's an RPG, like you're going from characters to characters. But it's... Oh, God. You should definitely watch... <laughs> TNG. Oh, hello, Yeroon. Nice to see you. Right, we have another TNG guy now. On the, st on the stream. Uh, please help me remember the game. Uh, winter, uh, I don't know what to say. Oh, there's also some... Um, so an old winter, very simple 3D. Uh, it's all like software rendering, pixelated with... You're looking through mask like goggles, winter goggles. And it's... Oh, it's nuclear winter game or something like... Look your winter... It is game. I think that's the that's the premise. Like it's nuclear winter, and you're going from a place to place on skis. Yeah, I can't believe that nothing is coming up, and this and the search is even. It it definitely has a winter uh, in its name. Console, yeah, maybe. I think it was a PC game, actually. Uh, but but really old, like... PC ski or die. Winter something. Yeah. Game... Games with winter in name. It's definitely something like never winter, over winter, f winter thing... Is it maybe snow? Snow winter, winter snow. Play ski or die. Oh shit! I remember this game. I played it as a kid. 
Oh wow, this is <laughs> this is such a flashback. Oh my god, I love this game. It had so many sports, and there was also like going down the mountain with a with a like a balloon. Oh shit, there's there was even a shooting with snowballs. And you played, and and you moved the cursor with uh, with keys, of course. So it was super hard. It didn't have any mouse support. Donuts, donut. Oh yeah. Oh my God, this was the hardest. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, awful. I don't think it's awful. I have definitely never heard of this one. I'd remember the snow goggles. Snow goggles uh, near me. Snow goggles near me. Uh, snow goggles old game. Old game name. <laughs> old game name. Goggles. I can't believe that it's so hard to find. What the hell? What the hell? Like, I definitely didn't dream this, okay? I definitely remember the game. There was actually, even somebody was trying to make a remake, like, five years ago, and then nothing happened with that. Ugh, I can't believe, I hate this, when you can't find something. Uh, what about searching on Twitter? Winter old RPG game. This is not, it's not, it's, I don't know, is it RPG? In my view, it's RPG, but not in a classic way. Is it Overwinter? No. Yeti Overwinter. It is game. There was also like a ski do and you could you could fly an airplane as well. Shit, I totally Air, airplane ski I'm going to die now. What more did you, So basically the game was about going from a, like it had a huge map, okay? And you would it's almost like a you know like an old Elder Scrolls. What was the what was the name of that one? Uh, now I have to Google Daggerfall. That's the one. I need. Like Daggerfall, and then you have this like huge map with like spots, and then you have different people in different places, and then you basically have to ski between the, and then you're being attacked, also by like enemies, airplanes, and it was so because it's so the controls are so janky and it's so hard to see anything because it's pixelated and very uh, and yeah it, it's like you just die randomly and you are like what the fuck how did I die and of course there was no save system you just replay everything it's not daggerful I mean not not my name but not my game but uh, over winter winter God Use your brain. Winter. Winterfall. Winterfell. No, that's also from Endless Elder Scrolls. Or something. Uh, it was definitely one word with. You say you didn't dream it, but you're describing a scene from Inception. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's to it totally is. How old were you when you played it? I didn't play it. I, I didn't play it when I was a kid. I played it when I was an adult. And somebody was like, man, this is so like... And, and when I found out about this game, I was like blown away. Like, wow, it's so crazy for 80s. Like, no, it's definitely... Skiing 80s RPG. Midwinter! Fuck! There it is! There it is! 
I just used the wrong search terms. This is the game. Th there it is. Ski goggles. Look. And look at this graphics. The graphics is fucking amazing. It has dithering. It has airplanes attacking you. There we go. Look at that. It's fucking amazing. Did you know about this game? Midwinter gameplay. 1989. So it's the end of 80s. Literally, yeah, of course. I'm so happy you find it. I haven't been able to get any work done since joining the stream. <laughs> Wait, you're working at like uh, 11 p.m. on Saturday? But yeah, it, it's so technically amazing, this game, that it's just mind-blowing. Like, yeah, you are like, you have this huge... Oh, yeah, select training. Yeah, oh, Wolf, that was the, like, a, some kind of a ski tank you can drive. But basically, you have this whole story around. You you can I think you can play it online actually. Uh, there is like a, I'm not gonna play it now, but uh, because I tried playing it, I remember how frustrated it was. And yeah, I mean it's it has such a complex system with everything and these like nice Casio watches and everything. Oh, and the sounds. And then. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, the stress flare, yes. Oh, and here's the map. Look how huge the map is. And you're basically like traveling between places. Heat mine. Wow, it's... And you know, it's so... Like, okay, let's skip to the gameplay because this is the super... And you know what's the most impressive thing about the game? It's that it actually had physics. Like when you're skiing... You have to go down slopes to ski and that's that's so impressive like it, it was actually like speeding you up like it had acceleration and oh oh you're actually targeting with a sniper look at that oh yeah so basically you you go from a place to place and you have your team so you collect people uh from a place to place but the but the thing is that people don't like each other Look at that, you're sniping, and it's like 3D, it has polygons and everything. It's for 1989, there is like, a, and there's an airplane. Yeah. Yeah. And now you die. Oh, nice, this is amazing. <laughs> Berlin noise spotted. Where did you see the, oh, you mean in the map. And there, what, what happened? Decisions. Oh, what the hell was that? There was some animation of you rolling down a hill. But it was so fast, probably because it's like on turbo mode. There. Oh my, my god. Such a such an amazing gif, but it's like so quick. <laughs> and look at this, like you have this mask looking through it and then these polygons oh you're throwing I mean imagine this was like 1989 and and you had this rendering which was old software as well and you're skiing and and you have physics on the skis going up and down slopes and as you go up the slope you slow down and then you stop and then you have to turn around it's crazy and and yeah, this is the graphics that I was I was talking about, like this simple, super simple polygon uh, polygon uh, colored polygons decisions. Oh yeah, you have to make decisions. It's crazy. It's just amazing uh, how good the, this game was. But yeah, now that one now when I play my game. See those mountains? You can go there. Yeah, literally, like back in 1989, you could you could go there. <laughs> Look, it's basically midwinter. <laughs> it's it's the same. It even it has more colors. But... Okay, so now that we know that UV two works, this is so good. Okay, anyway. Uh, now that we know that UV2 works, let's let's now edit the shader to not do this, but yeah, let's just make it 
Oh, what? Make it equal a light map. And now we should see some light maps. Still, things should be black. Um. Did you play Sturmovic uh, Su-25? I haven't played Su-25. I've played Il-2 Sturmovic. Oh, but this was this is some older thing, probably. Okay, so we can see that the light map is nice. Nice and shiny. Mmm, so pixelated. But, oh, yeah, and we can see this, uh, the, the forest that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, is being like with nice shadows and of course the road is fucked up because I was saying that I didn't rebake but yeah let's now combine it with uh, with everything else now the issue is that everything else is using a light map and it's are there like defaults in OpenGL that you can use? Like, I want the texture to be by default white and not black. So yeah, now it is combined with the base texture, right? Right? Can we see the pixels? Oh yeah, we can. So you can see here, well, I can't uh, use the mouse now. But you can see here these like uh, this dinosaur tail. <laughs> uh, the zigzags are from the the darker zigzags are from the UV two and from the light map. And then you have these uh, these tiny specks are from the UV one uh, from sorry from the base texture. So yes, we are literally combining two textures with different UVs. So that's that part is complete. Uh, love the look there. Is this baked in Blender? It is, yes. I do bake it in Blender, but the the road is black because I think some like there was another road on top of it. And then and then it didn't work. Wait. Yeah, I need to switch to uh wait, uh, I need to switch to the other UV. Uh wait, let's click on this first. Oh yeah, it is. It is correct. So yeah, I baked it in Blender, and as you can see, this uh, there should be our dinosaur tail here. Oh yeah, it is here. It's just that it's uh, using using a billionaire. F oh, there it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So the reason why the road is black is because there was another mesh on top of it, so it baked black. Because I actually have two road meshes. Yeah, there is the wall, and there is the roads, and yeah, so so the, the problem that I had was because I had some duplicates, which I hid, but I didn't unrender it, so as you can see, this rendering flag here, I didn't unset it, so that's why it was still rendering, and I should unset rendering as well, no, don't render this. Uh, don't render the curve and yeah the trees sure and the Sun okay let's try to rebake this oh but now I need to set up everything again yeah this is the annoying thing a weird zigzags at triangle boundaries that was weeks of life it's one blind yeah hello for for day nice to see you again uh, I think you just have to have a tiny white texture and bind that by default if you don't bind a color texture. Yeah, I see. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's see. Uh, I have this light bake, which I need to select. So, yes, the annoying part in Blender is that you need for each for all the or all our textures, I need to make sure that they render white. Unless uh, if I don't do that, then the baking is going to be 
the baker is going to think no let's do this the baker is going to think that we are using the texture on the on the surface for baking which I, which, which we don't want to have so yeah basically i need to go through each texture and do this all right which is the annoying part and if I decide to use the bake texture, I'm definitely going to have to make a little script to automate this. Uh, so, okay, we made this. Oh, now I can clearly see where the problem is. Uh, yeah, let's just let's just leave this for now. Uh, I don't care. I'm going to off the stream. I'm going to bake another one. So, okay, we select everything uh monty road and mountain that's the only two and then the most important thing is that you have to click on the fucking nodes in the shader unless it won't bake uh okay baking type multi-res let's just say uh okay that's that's fine okay let's let's bake and now wait forever So, uh, I did a lot of stuff like this with 3ds Max. In the end, I ended up using a custom ray tracer because of problems like this. Surely, it must be possible in Blender to bake only light and not light by albedo. Uh, yes, this is what I th thought. Hmm. So, okay, let's maybe try to like that diffuse contribution i don't know if this is if this means the diffuse map or it means uh yeah well we'll see i don't know if diffuse means using use color of the surface so yeah it's exasperated game dev sounds surely it must be possible yeah right <laughs> also i know that there is like a baking plugin for blender which kind of helps you it's called easy bake or something which basically just automates a lot of things it doesn't actually add any kind of new baking or anything it just automates things okay so there's a lot of black squares again which tells me that there's something wrong so let's check this out. Uh, oh, well, the road is a bit better. There is no black spots any, a, everywhere, but there are some black spots now, mm, which is better than than all black spots. So, so yeah, the, definitely that was the problem there. But now, why are there so many random black spots here? I don't know. Anyway, the, the cool thing is that in the tunnel, it should be black, which it's not. Okay, what the hell is going on now? Why is our tunnel also... Please tell me that this is not influencing other textures. Okay, it's not, so... Oh, what? Why is my stone wall texture baked? I have to reload it. Oh, shit. Okay, so for some reason, the bake was also... Mm. Well... Okay, let's make sure to save this one and nothing else uh, and yeah and now I have to go through each each thing and reconnect this so that it would export correctly uh, and this is already connected interesting uh, and then this Think we will connect this, this we connect this, and this. Oh, 
I didn't correct, cor cor correctly connect it. And this is going to connect here. Okay, so now we re-export. Maybe I don't even need to re-export. Well, let's see. Oh, I didn't copy the texture. Let's f do it fast until before it loads. What is going on? Why is it why is it rebuilding the reader? Did I accidentally Okay, that's weird. Let's go back to main. Okay. Here, I made a post. Nice. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh. First view at uh, working, uh, totally working. Bake. Okay, so. The, uh, the car is dark, but that's fine. Nice. The tunnel is actually dark now. And this place is also dark. Because it's behind the sun. And now we go on to a, a brightened... And I think that the... Yeah, the light bake is not so... It does provide a lot of nice variety though. And there's a tunnel again, and it's dark. And the, the shader is... Wait, there's it's it's bad. Oh wait, why am I setting a light map here? Okay, so what is the input color here? I need to remember. Oh, the right, the input color is actually I think the fog. Let's multiply everything. Uh, with light map. Uh, hell, hey, big N. Oh, is that me? Nice. Loved your Podvark tweet. What was going on there? Yeah, <laughs> what was going on there? Uh, okay, so now there's no fog. So, so even the light map is like multiplying with fog, which is not what we want. Oh, but it's a nice effect. It looks like like fog is actually black and whiteness. Imagine that in real life, like, like you have color near you, and then as the fog gets thicker, it becomes black and white instead of just, you know, like uh, scattering the uh, and absorbing the light. This is kind of nice. You remember that game called uh, Saboteur from back in the day, where you had like. Nazi occupied Paris and there was like a well thank god I remember the name of that game because now I would spend like 20 minutes looking for it but yeah you had like Nazi occupied Germany uh sorry uh, Nazi occupied Paris and then all the all the places that would be uh, occupied were black and white and those that you liberated would become colorful so it was a nice graphics play on graphics and I think only like blood or something was red in that black and white so it was like this uh, nice uh, red effect anyway yeah this is funky but yeah so how do we now make the things that don't don't use the light map not black uh, looks really cool Best real life fog effect is that things inside fog can appear blurry due to length scattering. All right, that's what I also tried to do with uh, in Unity. There is this. Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, the multi scatter fog or something like that. 
so it will it will blur out the light in the distance well like blur out um, kind of like a depth of field effect uh, am I seeing voxels or why does it look like that it's not it doesn't have any voxels no it's just it's low poly like you can see here uh, but yeah, how do we make things not dark now? Uh, Saboteur had the same plot and mechanic as Sean White skateboarding. Wait, isn't Sean White the snowboarder? Or is it, or is he a skateboarder? I don't know. Sean White skates boarding Sean White's skateboarding okay so what about what does it have to do with sa saboteur no oh. <laughs> you mean like it made the it make a black and white there was like a black and white effect I, I was thinking like does it does it also have Nazis and you have to liberate <laughs> he has the same shoes as me okay are you liberating uh, Paris from the Nazis I don't see any black and white in it. Oh, is this... Oh, the blue and white. Oh, nice! Oh, wow, this is super cool. Oh, this is exactly like in my game, then. Anything that's close is, like, colorful. <laughs> and everything that's further... That's actually a very nice way of... Uh, really like this. Like, it makes you... F yeah, it makes you... You can use it to focus on things. Like, to focus the player on things. Oh, wow, it's a quarter pipe that just appeared. It's shown when skateboarding the city was oppressed in gray and you brought back color by doing red tricks. Yeah. I don't know why, but I love skateboarding games where you fight Nazis. <laughs> I would totally play that one as well. Oh my god. Imagine that. You get attacked by the Stiegel Granate and you're like, you're blocking it with, uh, with your skateboard while flying, while doing a kickflip. Okay. I gotta go, but I tweeted that link for the post at you, so you can find it in Latin. Thank you, thank you, thanks a lot. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out and, and try to implement Tracy. Tony, <laughs> Tony Hawk's Pro Saboteur. <laughs> but yeah. Unfortunately, not many people know Saboteur game because it was in this era of games where it was like there was so many GTA ripoffs and it was like a GTA like game. Do you, do you know that there was a game called The Godfather, which is not Mafia? There was a, a, an exact copy of it almost, but it was with Godfather license. Uh, but yeah, it was the era of GTA, GTA Light, and it actually had racing, which was awful. But at least it had it. Uh, but anyway, yes, so when you're playing the game, you go through like uh, black and white. There is some black and white. And then it's a pretty nice effect, actually, when you liberate an area. Uh, I can't remember how you actually liberate an area. I guess you... And it's one of rare games set in Paris. Like, not many games are actually set in Paris. Oh, yes, the Nazis, the red, the red flags are the only red thing. And then... When you liberate... 
which is might be going to happen somewhere here. Oh, wait. Go deeper into the crypt. Oh, there it is. So yeah, when you liberate an area, well, he, I guess, li liberate, then there's this expanding color effect, like, ooh, it's, it was actually pretty cool, like, I was like, wow, it really makes you feel like, wow, I did a good thing, I, I brought color to this world, but it's so amazing that it's the same, uh, it's the same effect as Sh Sean White's skateboarding, <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I mean, kind of, kind of, used for the same purpose right adding adding color to the world okay uh just blocking the panzer shrek in the shot with a sick kick flip yeah exactly right also you have to go good luck doing sick flips okay goodbye okay apparently i don't have to go okay i take that back I take that back Life is a roller coaster. Life? You mean life is a skateboarding game? Life is a quarter pipe. Okay. So, what do we want to do next? I don't know. I don't really want to spend the whole night baking. So, maybe I just... Oh yeah, let's figure out how to make things not black. Hmm... So the, the easy thing is to just invert the whole thing. Mm. Make a default sampler white open GL. Sampling with no texture bounds. Hmm. What if you had this racing game but it was skateboarding? Hmm, like a rally. Uh, is there no always to be zero 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 one? Undefined. Oh, that's interesting. Undefined on some implementations. You see, this is a good question, Mister or Mrs. or Miss. Uh, there's really no such thing as being unbound. You're simply bound to the initial texture object, which is known as texture zero. The texture zero sounds so epic. Texture zero. Okay, you are strongly encouraged to think of texture zero as a non-existent texture. Okay, so you are. So it is kind of undefined behavior-ish. Ultimately, the value you're going to get in the shader depends on what happens to be in texture object zero at a time. I can't really find anything except. Form for, oh, I see. So anything that's been previously bound, I guess. The full texture, all texture start. What? All textures start out as one by one white textures. Okay, so actually the default is white and not black. But that must be caused by some previous. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's just because the 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 edge of the of our of our texture is black or something like the zero zero pixel of our texture like here you know and because everything is a zero zero UV then it just it's black uh, because I don't have a, or maybe on this side I never know which side is zero zero. Have you implemented vertex color? Could be quicker for lighting than baking light maps. Well, the problem is that I do have color, but the problem is some of my polygons are really big, like this ones. So I kind of don't want to rely on the resolution of vertex colors. But yeah, that's also a problem that, like, uh, yeah, actually, I, it would be nicer to have more dense dense polygons. I mean these polygons are pretty dense so so these ones are going to look fairly good like close to the player but once that are further away. I don't actually know if older games used more vertex color or 
yeah and also one one other thing is that i want to use vertex color on the road to blend between different types of roads so yeah i am going to use the colors already uh so yeah maybe uv1 is okay um you know what let's just try to paint this first pixel white and then see what happens eh just for fun maybe that actually fixes everything I don't want to pin okay no I don't want to pin I want to open it what the hell are you okay I mean this always worked okay now it works but obviously you are in bound to historical accuracy uh, you could also subdivide the mesh based on the blender baked light map and get a cool look maybe but that's a lot of work okay let's make this white PS1 exclusively used vertex color. I think light maps only came in with the PS2 generation. Okay, so yeah, that didn't change the color of the of the car, so that's not it. Uh, oh, but what if, what if, what if it's a bottom one? <laughs> Jesus, Photoshop is so slow when I'm streaming. My God. Oh, maybe maybe removing the the ruler is going to help. Wow, it's just locked in. Do you know that removing the ruler in Photoshop makes the Photoshop a lot quicker? It's a little hack. Maybe they fixed that in newer versions. I don't know. I'm still on the old one. Have you ever played with Houdini? I did, yes. And I even went to everything procedural this year in the Netherlands. And like 90... Oh, look! It's true! I discovered something and my, my assumption was correct. Oh, this is amazing. So yes, it's actually the bottom left corner that defines what color is going to be for all the meshes. Okay, so I just need to guarantee that the pixel in the bottom left is white. And there, I fixed my issue with just doing nothing, pretty much. Nice. Oh, yeah, of course, I still have this problem with... Uh, because I'm running on the dedicated Jeep... Uh, sorry, on the... Uh, but now it's... Okay, it's dark here, but it's not dark in the tunnel. It's weird. So yes, the next problem with light maps is how do you project light maps onto the car? <sighs> Which is another problem. Now I need to have I need to basically have a light map like a shadow light map like uh, you know with a with depth and everything mm, which is going to take forever. I actually tried to implement depth uh, I tried to write depth to a texture and for some reason I couldn't get it to work so oh yeah and of course the trees are not affected by by the but this is nice like this side of, side of the mountain is completely dark I didn't even know that I even like the little like uneven okay let's make the uh Uh, let's not do this instead let's make the yeah let's not make the the fog multiply with light map but do it before the fog um, 
anyway, uh, where was I? I was reading the... Uh, you could also subdivide the mesh based on the baker. Okay. Um, obviously you are bound to historical accuracy with triple D. Yes, I was try. I was talking about Houdini. Uh, I went through everything procedural where like 95% of people are Houdini people. Like I mean, people who do Houdini and their and and their University of Applied Sciences is really heavy into Houdini. Uh, and I'm just a guy who is like I actually code everything procedurally. I do. Oh, that's a nice jump. Can I actually s rescue myself? Yeah, I can. Okay. So these there's these tunnels which should be black. But yeah, anyway, I tried Houdini. But it's so complicated that it feels like damn, I wish I started using Houdini like 10 years ago and not now. So but now that Blender has geometry nodes, that makes me uh kind of I want to use geometry nodes o more over Houdini. And I, I mean, I also know that Houdini has shitty licensing. Uh, so... At least that's what I heard. And you can't use it at runtime. You can only use it at... Uh, you know... In editor or... Bake things. Anyway, yeah, these, these little, like black it, it, it's so weird how there's so much variety in the road now which is very nice even though the the variety is totally accidental yeah and this is so bright because the tunnel is not is not baked. It doesn't use a light map yet. But yeah, I basically need to make some kind of a uh, automatic script or something to make everything use uh, the light map and not just this. And the problem is that there's a few things in Blender that I rely on like uh, modifiers. So basically I need to I need to apply all the modifiers, then unwrap the UV light map, and then bake the map. So yeah, it's very destructive, and you can't. So so yeah, the only the only option is to really write the script to do that. Every time I want to export, I need to do a pass of bake. Yeah, automatic baking of light maps, basically. Yeah. No. Okay, and I think I'm gonna finish the uh, stream soon because, yeah, that, this took more time, but <coughs> let's, let's read the, the rest of the chat first. Um, Ever since Photoshop started relying on more GPU acceleration, it's been a mess in my experience. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, they started using GPU a long time ago, like... I remember like 2008 or something, even then, because I remember that at some point it was like, oh yeah, you need to have a GPU now because everything is a lot faster. Um, yay! Yeah, it works. Bottom left is pixel zero zero confirmed. Yeah, it is. It definitely is, as it should be. Citation needed. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm, I, I'm, I'm never sure. I, I have no idea. I need, I always need to, just try and see which one is zero zero. Uh, and I think that DirectX and OpenGL are, they have different. Uh, they're like the opposite, so you never know. Uh, I hope that would be the solution. Light probes. <laughs> Yeah, light probes, but light probes are it, it, light probes also feel like something I'm gonna take. It's gonna take me like at least a week to implement. 
and because you have all these like tetrahedral stuff and uh, spherical dynamics uh, for harmonics which I don't understand at all so but somebody who was on my last stream Tamat I think was his name I think he was the one who said that he actually implemented uh, tetrahedral spherical harmonics probes and it was not actually that difficult so uh, you could also ray trace and sample textures you're near right right oh right wait that could actually work uh, you know I I, I, I I need to do because I want to, so so yeah so this is the plan I'm going to have for the road I want to have I want to use uh, vertex color to paint different surface types so there's, if there's going to be a little wet or uh, a little snowy you know um, you're gonna have a different color and of course what needs to happen is that physics it also needs to act on physics right so the uh, when I ray cast my wheel into the mesh I need to pick up the you know the triangle and then I need to look up into the vertex so yeah that thing I need to look into the vertex and I need to sample the vertex colors of the mesh so yeah am I actually keeping vertices in the memory or not I think I do I think I never actually discard them so yeah they're already there uh, so that would work and uh, and then um yeah so basically that means that i could sample a uv uv as well and then sample the texture hmm maybe i'm gonna do that yeah that's not a bad idea you know sounds silly but uh not a bad idea you should uh, you should sample vertex color to color the car and then tell me how to do it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what I was talking about. I mean, I want to sample vertex color, but uh, but for physics, not for... Uh, uh, but that's... I've done that in Unity before, so that's not very complicated. In Unity, there is a thing where you raycast, there is a, there is a triangle index. Uh, property in that like uh, raycast hit has a uh, raycast hit struct has a triangle index property so you can look up a triangle index multiplied by three to get an index that sample like a vertex but but it also needs to be readable it, it needs to be in the memory the mesh so it needs to be read write enabled so that you can read the mesh and then, yeah, uh, that's how I do it in Podvarak. I, that's that's how I do uh, physics for tires as well. So, anyway, you can definitely do that. The problem is that because I'm here, I'm using Bullet and my my own mesh system. I need to, you know, I need to wrap around that and have some spaghetti code to get the vertex. I guess. I have to implement all these things, which in Unity you get for granted. Uh, be be happy for that. <laughs> okay. Houdini would let you use everything you know from scripting procedural effects to script things in there. Yeah. But yeah, heavy footprint in any workflow changes the approach quite a bit. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I really love about Houdini is that um, you can you can script your workflow. Uh, which is like I wish and, and not just script but you use nodes to make your own workflow like oh I want to export this position map and I want to bake this and then create a UV out of the you know like every I want every software to have that like I because I'm always exporting some kind of text uh, custom data from any software and and yeah in blender unfortunately you just need to make a script for that which i actually do have for my for podvarak i made a script for that so when i'm exporting vehicles where is this there it is so this hof thing 
Hof Exporter, that's my, uh, well, that's old name for the Podvarak, which is House of Flowers. And so I have this automatic baker uh, for House of Flowers, which is baking, uh, yeah, this is for baking ID, for example. ID, which I uh, import into Substance and then do a Substance uh, procedural texture. So, yeah, but I had to write the script for this, and it's annoying writing a script, it takes like a day. If I had a graph, I would do it in minutes. So yeah, uh, that, that sucks. I hope in Blender they introduce some kind of a workflow, uh, you know, workflow graph or something. Uh, spherical harmonics isn't, isn't that hard once you know what you're doing, but knowing what you're doing is hard work. <laughs> I have a feeling like that's everything. Everything in programming is that. Once you know what you're doing, I mean, yeah, I mean, you need to, uh, you have to do it once to know what you're doing. Now I do have to go. Okay, yeah, goodbye. Well, you went a long time ago. Sweet, thanks for the verdict sampling explanation. I'll check that out. Okay. Uh, yeah, no problem. There's a vertex index. Uh, did I, did you already look for it? Raycast hits. Uh, index. There it is. Triangle index. That's what I was talking about. So you get a triangle index from the hits and you can then sample a mesh collider. Oh yeah. Well, it only works with a concave mesh collider. So it can't be a convex because it needs to match exactly the mesh, right? So that's one of the problems. You can't cast into a box or something. Uh, it needs to match the mesh exactly, so that because so so you have the exactly same triangle. Uh, yeah, and there is even a, an example how to use it. There, you're you're taking the triangle index, you're sampling triangles, and then you're using these triangles to sample a vertex. So yeah. There's, oh yeah, this one is just drawing triangles. Okay, so I think I'm going to wrap up here because I am tired and yeah. Um, but let's see. Oh yeah, let's let's go over the, um, the Trello, which I didn't even open. I totally forgot about that. Oh, yeah, let's see the, sorry. Let's see the to-do. So, light baking, add UV to vertex, we finished that, job done, oh wait, job done, import, light bake, texture into game, job done, UI, add ability to create ratio independent UI quads, did not do, um, because, you know, we didn't have time, so that's gonna stay for the next time, uh, and for my uh, shakedown implementation, I've actually added a few more things, which I'm going to need to finish before publishing. Uh, and that is, uh, which are the things I added? So yeah, intro, intro music. I already have intro music. I'm gonna play it next time, maybe. Maybe next time I'm gonna implement the intro, the intro screen, I don't know. But I have to also, maybe actually the next, the next one might be modeling stream. And I think I'm actually going to use geometry nodes because I want to make a little generator for uh, guardrails. So there you go. I think I think the next one is gonna be geometry nodes guardrails. Uh, okay, so borderless full screen, yeah, done, but not working. Light maps, uh, yep, that's now done, kind of. But I, ha I still have to test more. Add icon, well, that's a little thing. Pause and exit prompt, yeah, so when you press escape, I want to show a prompt that says, are you sure you want to exit? Yes or no, you know? Uh, or even, oh, maybe I should have like a menu that says restart or something. Um, loading screen. Uh, yeah, so in the beginning when you start, I want to add a loading 
little loading texture which I realized that I have to load before loading everything else so I, I need to have a small preload cache thing so that I can load this texture first and then sh display it which is an interesting uh, an interesting uh, you know uh, quirk which I only realized later uh, yeah adding crash sounds yeah, I already have crash sounds from Podvarek, so I'm probably going to use those, and but I just need to detect impacts. Adding surface effects, grass, tarmac, snow, that's what I was talking about. Ray casting into the mesh. Uh, yeah, when you crash at high speed, you should the engine should die. You should not be able to continue. Uh, capsule colliders for trees. Yes, trees don't have colliders right now, so... I'm just going to add capsules and then fix resizing uh, which should also work with the frame buffer so that's kind of the minimum thing and then we have a lot of art to do as well uh, yeah so next time art uh, geometry nodes I guess and thanks for uh, thanks for being on the stream and watching again uh, I don't know when the next time is going to be maybe tomorrow Tomorrow is Sunday. Uh, I should probably do some work as well, other other than um, other than uh, this game. So uh, yeah, maybe Monday or Tuesday or something like that. I'll see. So yes, thanks for being here and good night. Any more? Any uh, no more questions? Okay, that was it. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to look into spherical harmonics and see how, if that is too difficult or not. Um, but yeah. Okay, so yes, Midwinter, that was the game. You should, you should try playing it. It's pretty amazing, but it's very frustrating because you don't see anything and the controls are terrible, so... Okay, one last time, good night and goodbye. Take care, too. And uh, yes, uh, I need to try your game. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. So, uh, please send the, the alpha as soon as possible. Okay, um, fun watching. Thank you. Yes, see you, see you again. Bye.